Welcome to another episode of Ask the Lawyer. Today we're going to be asking about truck crashes and do you know what to do if you're involved in one? I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. My guest is attorney Trent Shooping of the Warshower Law Group in Atlanta. Trent, thank you for making some time for us today to answer our questions. Hey, thank you, Rob. So we're talking about tr truck crashes, collisions, uh, probably with injuries. Let's start at the beginning. What is, in your experience, the most common reasons for, for truck collisions? Sure. Well, the short answer, of course, is that truck accidents can happen really for almost any reason. Uh, but generally today, and the ones that sort of come to see us are the ones where you have uh, people in the car, civilians, if you will, who get injured or uh, sometimes uh, you have fatalities involved in collisions with uh, Big, with big rigs, with 18-wheelers, with other kinds of commercial vehicles and trucks. Uh, and we sort of see, you know, obviously, again, they can happen for any of the same reasons that people have car crashes, but there are certain patterns that we start to notice in these kinds of big rig type wrecks. Okay. Uh, one of them that we see a lot is where drivers get lost and they wind up making a poor decision as a result of mm. being lost. Uh, obviously, uh, that, that can maybe be true for anyone, but particularly when someone is driving a larger vehicle, it oftentimes makes it more difficult or more dangerous for them to turn it around. So we see truck drivers who make poor choices lots of times just as a result of uh, not being willing to pull off the road, find a safe spot, pull out their map, and figure out where they are. Uh, this leads oftentimes to making poor choices about where to make a U-turn, about looking at directions instead of watching the road ahead of them and running into the back of someone, um, those types of things. The other, uh, another sort of common scenario that we see is truck drivers who are fatigued. They've just simply been driving for too long. They haven't had the proper amount of rest. Uh, either sometimes it, it turns out that we get their truck logs and we investigate it and are able to show that the truck driver didn't follow the regulations as far as when they were going to take rest. Other times they may be following those regulations, but they're still not doing the things that are required for them to be in the proper mindset to, to be ready to drive when they get behind the wheel. So uh, the first example you gave, that would seem to me uh, that's purely on the driver. The second example, I'm, sometimes that may be on the driver or, or could that be on the company itself for putting extra pressure on the drivers and pushing them to maybe uh, push the boundaries of the, of the safety guidelines? Or what do you think there? Well, that's a good point. And it, it often that is the case that it comes back to the trucking company as well as the driver. Obviously, the driver is always going to be responsible for their own conduct. But uh, there are a lot of trucking companies, unfortunately, that choose to put profits over safety and, and force drivers to drive. Now, to be clear, of course, there are obviously the great majority of truck drivers are great salt of the earth type people who do a very difficult job. Uh, and we have a great amount of respect for that. In fact, we represent a lot of truck drivers. Uh, however, unfortunately, there are uh, those truck drivers and truck driving uh, companies out there that choose to to make poor choices and choose to have drivers out there. Uh, there the pressure drivers keep driving after they're tired. Um, recently, I saw, I think there was a video that sort of went viral uh, where it showed a dispatcher uh, trying to force a driver. Uh, the driver had actually recorded this shortly before he quit, and he recorded a conversation with the dispatcher, kept encouraging him to drive, even though to do so would have been in violation of the limits and even though he hadn't had proper rest. And so uh, we do see that oftentimes with uh, companies that either choose to do that or they just look the other way. Sometimes you'll have a company that doesn't pressure the driver to do it, but they look the other way and don't take the steps to make sure that their drivers are complying with the rules and to make sure that their drivers are uh, getting proper rest and doing things to make sure that they're safe. Trent, is it sometimes difficult to figure out where ultimate responsibility or maybe there's more than one person responsible? You mentioned the driver's always responsible for their actions, but there could there be times where it is the company or maybe there's equipment and maybe or maintenance wasn't what it should be. I, I imagine that sometimes can be difficult for people in your position, correct? Uh, well, it is. It's a large part of what we do in trucking cases uh, oftentimes involves investigative work and finding these things out. Uh, obviously, the trucking companies and the drivers lawyer up fairly quickly and they, they don't certainly confess to, to what they've been up to. So you have to go through, uh, you know, certain steps. You have to uh, uh, some of the steps we're able to access through the legal system. Other times it's just, you know, good old uh, sort of shoe leather investigation to find out what was going on, what led to this wreck. And, and again, sometimes the reason is innocuous. Sometimes people just make mistakes. Uh, but oftentimes, and you see, and it's no coincidence that when you have these wrecks, oftentimes there is something there that's going on, and it's more than just a simple mistake. And you're able to start tracing it back through. Uh, so, for instance, you look at the truck driver's logs, and you see, have the, has the truck driver been keeping logs? Do they show a truck driver who's been following the rules who's been getting proper rest? Uh, if they do, are those logs fraudulent? Sometimes we see cases where the logs uh, don't make any sense. And you look and you, you realize that you can see that the truck uh, driver, for instance, if they say that they've traveled from Atlanta to Charlotte in two hours, 
Uh, well, we obviously know that that's suspicious and something we need to look into if they uh, are covering more distance than would be reflected in the amount of time they're showing driving. So not the kind of thing that, uh, that just an average driver who uh, is in a collision, in a wreck, would, would be able to do. So uh, let's talk through some of the steps. Uh, I'm in an accident, uh, a collision uh, involving a, a big rig, probably going to be if I'm injured. What are the steps I should take? What are the first few things I should do? Uh, uh, take us through that timeline. Sure. Well, obviously, the first thing you want to do in any collision is make sure that, you know, you get yourself to a place to safety, you get off the road if you can, get whatever medical attention that you need. Uh, you also want to make sure if, if you're able to, if your physical condition allows you to do so, that you document as much as you can. Take pictures, uh, look around. If it's, you know, if it's a minor wreck and you're able to walk about, obviously, you want to get the other person's information. But if it's a more serious type wreck, if you're leaving an ambulance, then uh, you want to call your friends and family and let them know what happened, uh, let them know where the wreck was and if they're available to do so. Or if you get this call from a friend, or family member who's been involved in one of these wrecks, uh, you might want to head out there yourself and take some pictures. The major trucking companies and insurance companies have rapid response teams that are ready uh, from the moment a major wreck happens to go out to the scene and to start uh, collecting evidence, to start uh, sometimes changing evidence, to start influencing the way police reports get written and start lobbying the investigating officers to write a report uh, a certain way or to come to certain conclusions about how a wreck happened. So you're always going to be a little bit behind the gun, but the sooner you can uh, let people know about that, the sooner you can sometimes call an attorney, uh, then that gets the chance to have you know professionals who also understand these types of wrecks and get them involved. Uh, so oftentimes that happens that we get called fairly early in a wreck, and it's a, it's a great advantage when, when we do get to come into a case early on uh, because there still might be some physical evidence at the scene. We can go and look at uh, tire marks. We can look at gouge marks in pavement and still be able to piece that together and have some sense of when those were put there and, and try and work through that process. So if, uh, if I say I'm a, the, a family member uh, of someone who was taken to the hospital after a uh, wreck with a, with a uh, big rig, um, it's best to get somebody like you on, on our side earlier in the process rather than later. But even if I'm not even sure, do I need an attorney? Do we, does this case qualify for an attorney? Calling and get information, uh, let you guys help us decide that is, is the best way to go, correct? Absolutely. And we, uh, you know, we evaluate, uh, oftentimes get calls from people who just want us to evaluate a case and let them know if there's anything they're worth pursuing. And uh, sometimes the answer may be no. Sometimes, uh, you know, we get calls from family members, we investigate a case and we have to share with them the unfortunate news that I'm sorry, we you know, thoroughly investigated this and we, we think your family member might have been at fault. Uh, other times it's completely the opposite. And oftentimes they might have been given misinformation by uh, people that had interest in giving them misinformation. We're able to do some work and discover things that they would not have been aware of had we not been able to investigate the case. Uh, so uh, either way, there's there's really uh, certainly for most firms like ours, um, you know, people are always welcome to call and see if there's anything there worth pursuing or worth looking into. Well, let's talk about uh, if uh, you know someone's in an accident, uh, they've got to go to the hospital. Their life's been turned upside down. What if they're thinking, I don't know, if, I mean, I can't work. I'm not sure I can afford an attorney to help me go uh, get some uh, justice in this case. Well, what do you say to that? Sure. Most firms like ours uh, work on a process where we, we have what's called a contingency fee. Uh, and, and that's the case, you know, unless the, the person just happens to be fabulously wealthy, it's very hard to afford an attorney to pay them by the hour, certainly when you're going up against well-funded insurance companies or well-funded trucking companies. And so what we do is, you know, we, we partner with our clients. We give them uh, advice up front and let them know what the expectations of their case might be. And take a contingency fee so that uh, if we're able to recover for our clients, we take our fee at the end of the case. And along the way, we pay the expenses. Our firm pays the expenses of pursuing the case. And the clients don't owe us. We don't send them a monthly bill for the hours that we've worked on the case. Um, and it, 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 what this does is it allows uh, people who otherwise couldn't afford lawyers to do so. It allows us to partner with them. And then certainly, uh, obviously, our incentive is, is, is to always do the best job for our client in that way. Great. Trent, I, I, a lot of great information as usual. Thank you for answering our questions today. Uh, thank you, Rob. Good to be here. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been attorney Trent Shooping with the Warshower Law Group in Atlanta. If you want the best information about truck crashes, you're ready to choose a lawyer that lawyers choose, be sure to visit askthelawyers.com. Also, if you don't mind taking a second to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can do that below. Thanks for watching. I'm Rob Rosenthal with askthelawyers.com.